Welcome back. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Oh, God, Matt, that was grueling. You with, had me on the hot seat. With my co-host, S. Lisa Derrick. Our guest today is an accomplished painter and quite a fucking survivor, Alex Arispe. How you doing, man? Welcome. Good. Wow. Thank you. Alex. I got my booties on. We're open for business. Shake yeah. your booties. This is a show where we shake our booties. I learned not to wear the black socks is the new rule. We can't I wear know. black socks on the set anymore. I know. We can't be and we barefoot. And we can't be barefoot on which the is set like anymore. Which is such a buzz. And then I look around on the damn set and it's got more scuffs than it did before they painted it. What the hell? What's going on? Yeah. All right. So, Alex, uh, uh, now you've been our guest on the show before, but uh, for, the, for the people who haven't seen you, let's, I'll do a Cliff Notes version. Sure. Um, in addition to being an accomplished artist, a lot of your recent work has been informed by the fact that you are a cancer survivor. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, you're not a one-dimensional like, oh, I'm just going to make art about this. You have a vast uh, uh, trove of influences and also of outlets. You're a boxer. I practice boxing. You practice it. <laughs> practice it, yeah. Not healthy enough to actually have a fight. Okay. But, uh, but you I do pra I'm, Yeah, I'm in the ring almost uh, pretty much every day. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, okay, now, now um, this is an example here of, of a, a painting. What's going on? Whoa, what's going on in this wow. one? Uh, I believe this one's called The Shower. This wow. is, uh, this is how I was starting to express myself before I knew I was sick. So uh, you were feeling sick I was without feeling knowing sick, you and were I was sick. like, "Well, this is this looks pretty much how I feel." So wow, I think I'm gonna try to go for that kind of style, and see what wow. see where it takes me. So, uh, and this is uh, what year is this painting? This year, this uh, I feel like it might have been like oh five, oh six, two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah. So that's about the time you just started having all this. Now, were you boxing then too? No, no, yeah. I didn't start boxing until uh, my last round of chemo, like a. Maybe about a year after that. Wow. So you went through about a year's worth of just gnarly chemo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, where, where did you live then? Uh, in, the, in, the same, uh, in the same apartment as I've always lived over here off of uh, Wilton. I've been in L.A. this whole time. You weren't born there, though. Where, where, are you, where are you originally from? Originally from Houston, Texas. You're from Houston, yeah. Texas. When did you get out of Houston? Maybe about 2004. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So... so uh, What's the difference between Houston? I mean, were you in the art scene at all in Houston? Uh, not, not really. I, I was mostly, uh, I was in a band. So ah. being, in a, being a drummer uh, brought me out here. Okay. Yeah, so. You moved out here, you started making art, you got sick, but you're still making art. And yeah, you, I've and, always and made art. Well. I just never found my voice until, uh, I guess, uh, I lost a testicle and then it started becoming a little more real there. So let's see, that's, let's that's see. when I found my voice. Let's see the next. <laughs> let's see the next one. Is this new work? No, this is an old piece. It's called Sleep. Wow. Oh. So yeah. it's pretty intense what you're going through here, obviously. And yet you've got some pretty cool like innovations with the because you're basically putting like abstract painting onto realistic illustration here. Yeah. Yeah. How I, uh, do you do that? Like <laughs> that's. I mean, that is amazing. Like your control of your drips is phenomenal. Yeah, it's a bit of a of a pain sometimes, but um, you know, it's it's worth it in the end for me. Have you have you found a, a good enough reception uh, to like something that's kind of? I mean, the work can kind of make one queasy. I mean, it's your work is kind uh, of well, confrontational. You know, uh, have, you, have you ever seen anybody go ah when they saw your work? No, not necessarily, but they do think it's. Uh, the insides, you know, like skin ripped off and, you know, skin individual or whatever. But after they know the story and all that stuff, they realize that's what the soul feels like on the inside. Ah. So I probably have to change up the colors in the near future just to uh, convey that a little better than just it's just uh, some bloody mess. It's uh, it's it's well conveyed, though. I it's well so, conveyed. Can, let's let's take a look at the next artwork. Can we get the next artwork? Oh, uh, this is one of my favorites, yeah. What happened here? That's when uh, I had too much chemo and uh, I got blisters on my uh, gums. Oof. And that was pretty fun for about, uh, I don't know, a few weeks. That, uh, yeah, so that's about that part of, uh, that part of uh, 
So, the week. so do you have influences relative to making art? You know, are there artists that really like changed your way of thinking about how a, a, an artwork? Yeah, works? Um, this one guy named Franta. I don't. I can't find him on the internet. I can't find his first name. Nothing. I just have a book that. Uh, Franza. Uh, Franta. Franta. Yeah, and uh, he kind of mixes slabs of uh, humans against uh, pretty straight lines. Is what I try to do and. Francis Bacon was an influence only uh, because I realized it was okay to put a, a suffering figure in a place where something happened. So I just saw some really great Francis Bacon's at the Getty. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There, was, there was a show there a couple uh, little while ago. Now, what's going on here? That's another one I think before I, I got sick. Uh, I before think, you knew you were sick. Yeah, before I knew I was sick. Yeah, I was probably carrying a tumor for about four years before I knew and uh, this one's called fitting and uh, just about the struggle of uh, simple things like that sitting climbing stairs taking a shower everything it all takes your identity away so uh, you know I started trying to express myself in that way and I was like well this feels right now now yeah. are you or when you're when you're painting I mean there's a little action going on in this and yet there's some some rigorous drawing skills I mean what percentage of time does each one take up as as far as the total you know how much work how much of the total time did you work on the rigorous drawing and and does what looks like kind of slapdash abstraction is that a little more labor intensive than one might initially think Yeah it is because I, you know sometimes I, I I get to the point where I feel like I'm finished and then I'll pick it up like maybe years later you know and and I've gotten to the point where now I feel good enough to where I can get one of these things down in about two weeks oh you know wow. and you know if, if I uh, if I work hard enough at it but before it was just such a pain in the ass to just sit there and just now lately instead of painting you've been writing yeah I tell mean, me tell me about that well um, yeah I've been writing uh, it started with um, I'd buy a bottle of Johnny Walker and drink half of that and just start uh, putting out my feelings, you know, and typing them out and this is what I think and then next thing you know, you know, it's funny what you say and do when you think nobody's watching and I didn't think anybody would pay attention to what I was writing and then uh, I'd wake up uh, the next morning, not hungover by the way, but uh, I wouldn't remember what I wrote and I'd be like, oh, you know, I'd start thinking, I'm like, shit, I don't know what I said. I'd go to delete it, and there'd be comments and likes and all kinds of stuff, and then eventually people started telling me, hey, you should make a book from it. And uh, so I guess that's what I'm working on now, you know, but it was all an exercise back to articulation. So I think I said the last time is uh, after the chemo and everything, I had such chemo brain that I, uh, I couldn't spell my name anymore, you know, I couldn't put together a sentence and all that stuff. Real and fog? Yeah, it was really just really bad, you know, just a complete loss of identity. And uh, so I started practicing that. I always wrote a little bit, but once I realized I couldn't, you know, I was forgetting letters in my name, I was like, well, should I better practice uh, getting back to that, you know, and still seems like to this day I, I write a little better than I speak, you know, and, um, you know, the truth is I'm just smart enough to know I'm stupid. I, we could have done this uh, interview over email, right? What, what, what are we looking at here? This um, one is uh, from a triptych called Tender Moments. And uh, well, it's about not being able to enjoy the ones you love. And, you know, they, uh, they're pretty much a shadow. You know, their presence is there, but you, you can't uh, enjoy their features or, you know, much of anything else. You know, they're just kind of... Uh, a shadow there with you while you're melting away in this kind of shit, I guess. So you've been through the ringer, and your art, it, it doesn't do this whole, I, I think there's a lot of the culture now, and maybe having, as a survivor, you've kind of felt these, there's so many like feel-good nonprofit groups saying, you can beat it. And when you're sitting there in the bed or going through a chemo session, yeah. that's not how you feel at all. There's no, is no there, there's don't. none of that fun music going, come on, you can beat it. No, you, you know, truthfully, you don't want to hear that shit when you're feeling like that, you know. And everybody always has a suggestion like, oh, have you tried being a raw foodist? And, you know, have you tried eating grass, you know? Hey, like, how about a, a cider vinegar enema? 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, just a bunch of yeah. dumb shit. It's like, well, that's why you die, assholes. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, I just went by what the doctors told me, and that almost killed me too. But you know, You're at here. least I'm here. You didn't try Eastern medicine instead. No, not a, not at no. all. So Western but Western worked this time. It did this time, you know. Yeah. You know, it's got its limits. That which does not kill you makes you stronger. Do you feel that way? Uh, or? yeah, I've actually, you know, proved it. So you know, I would uh, I would have never thought of boxing before. I always say, you know, I'm an artist. Ow, 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 you know. So, and here I am, just uh, getting my ass kicked or kicking ass uh, every day in in the ring. Wow. And what are we looking at here? We're in the bathtub. Oh, yeah, geez. this was going to be from a new series because, uh, you know, there's so many male figures in that. But uh, my sister, before she died, went through a lot of suffering, too. And, it, you know, it's going to par- be a part of a series uh, called Women Hurt, too, or Women Hurt Also. How did she die? Uh, multiple things. Just, uh, just a litany of shit, you know. And you grew up in Texas. I did, yeah. So, so, so... Uh, how different is it in Texas from, right. from Los Angeles? You know, you go back there ever? I do, yeah. Um, I've just noticed, yeah, you could, know. They, they, is there a chance in hell you could make it as an artist in Texas, or are you happy to be here as an artist? I'm happy to be here as an artist. I mean, you know, I've been turned down plenty. And, uh, you know, it's, it, when we were younger, like, well, you're too young to be in our gallery. I don't know what the hell that means. And, uh, you know, and then you always hear like, well, your, you know, your work doesn't look like the other work we have. It's like, well, of course not, asshole. I'm my own artist, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, why would it look like, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you've, I've seen you um, at Gabba Gallery. You've, hung, you've had some work there. Yeah. And I've seen mm-hmm. you at the Beverly Hills Art Fair. That's where I mm-hmm. met you. And... I remember the first time I saw your art was in a little teeny gallery next to one of the bars in Los Feliz. Yeah, the the yeah. in gallery. Yeah. The in gallery. Yeah. yeah. So was, you were in the, the in, in gallery. gallery. Yeah. yeah. It was basically the storage room of the bar. Where? where uh, well, now, do you still haunt Hollywood like you used to? Mm, well, I'm, I now live in um, another part of the city. I'm no longer in Los Feliz, but. Um, I spend my time in. I do haunt parts of Hollywood. Yes. You still, yeah. I try to avoid Hollywood. As well. Jeez, I'm haunting Much. the shit out of Hollywood lately. You're you're a Hollywood haunter. Yeah, yeah. I am. You know, that's that's what comes you're, with uh, and you're running from your demons. You stay, you walk around all damn day. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 uh, did you have you seen uh, the the defaced star of the? person that we can't not talk about this week. No, Donald I didn't Trump. get a chance to you see it. See yeah, the, I don't, uh, I don't, defaced star. Yeah, I don't, I don't go that far on the, I don't usually go that way on the weekends or, or even the weekdays because, you know, it's just the junkies there looking at your pockets to see what they get from you. Uh-huh. So, uh huh. So. Nice to know Hollywood's still a slum. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so, uh, so I, I guess, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's been a wild week. How did, how did, how did you handle this election? Uh, I just I just handled it by uh, writing about it and making videos. You've had some pretty fun videos on on uh, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, cussed out Scott Bayo in one of them. Scott <laughs> Bayo, who'd yeah. have thought? Charles, yeah, who, who'd have did thought? Did you call him Charles the Discharge? The Charles in Discharge. <laughs> uh, yeah, that guy can kiss my ass. I don't know. You know, it's just uh, I didn't like the idea that uh, someone come out of the gutter like that and. Just start talking shit willy nilly, you know, and uh, be different if he's already in the public eye. But I thought this fucker was in a coffin. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, Scott Bayo? Scott Bayo, yeah, you know. So I, I just, I don't know. Just something about it, but I'm holding a grudge all year and I'm going to continue making videos and talking shit about it just because it makes me feel good in here. That's you got to get it out somehow. Now, in addition to uh, like, you know, writing as far as uh, your, you know, a narrative, so to speak. Your paintings are pretty narrative, yeah, but they're true. they're not meant to be seen. Like you don't have to have everyone next to each other, right? I mean, right. can we take a look at this one? See, there's like this is all we need. We don't need there, you don't need a bunch of these, right? Yeah, you kind of get the point in each one of them, but it's nice when they are all together because it does form that narrative. You know, yeah. it does uh, it does show the story, but you don't necessarily need it. You know, it's just fun to have the story. And just for the record, these are oil paints, acrylic paints. 
Uh, they're enamel. Enamel. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, you and Picasso use house, house paint. paint, right? Yeah. Yeah, house paint. Pollock used it too, so no shame yeah. in that at all. So um, where do you, where, now, what are you working on right now? The writing or the painting? The writing right now. I'm less than a quarter of the way editing it. I just hit 50,000 words last 50, night. 50,000 words. Wow. Yeah. wow. Somewhat autobiographical, you think? Yeah, I think so. The way I put it, I was like, I don't know if it's an autobiography, a memoir, or a really long suicide note. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. So, you know, it's, 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 uh, it can be heavy at times. But life's heavy, time. right? Yeah, well, yeah. You're, you're confronting it just head on. Is there a catharsis? Like when you're done with a painting, do you feel certain, like, are you, are you in a better physical or emotional or mental state after having got it all out onto the canvas than you were when you started? I'd like to think so. Uh, I think if that happens, it lasts for maybe the most a week, and then it goes away. Oh. You know, it just, um, I thought I was going to feel good once I hit the 40,000 words that we talked about, and it just didn't, I just felt empty after that, and just, I was like, well, I guess I've run out of shit to say, but apparently not, you know, I just no. don't seem to shut up, oh. and, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's fine. You know, no, nobody, nobody uh, leaves negative comments or says any, nobody really says any shit against me. So. Well, but you are a boxer. I mean, I, they, I think they're afraid of like... Yeah, gonna, they, they might be afraid come, of that. You're going to come you kick know? their ass. I might fly you. to their well, town and do that. Some other places, they would just, oh, this guy's going to defriend me. Big deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. But with your Facebook account, it's like, ooh, yeah. Great. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then I don't unfriend people and they don't unfriend me. It just, just seems to be that way. And... I don't give a shit whether on, they're on the right or left, you know, it's, uh, it's all part of the same bird to me. Have you been to any of the protests? No, I haven't. No? Nope. No. Any desire to go? No, I don't. No? Nope. I don't. I just, you know, truthfully, I'll tell you this, I don't give a shit. I've never given a shit who's president, who's not. I've been just as broke, just as sick through all of them. You know, I've lived my life ignoring them, but what I don't like is I don't want the waves of hate crashing on my shore. Right. You know, I've been fine without dealing with that kind of stuff, and I'm not going to start now, uh -huh. you know, for somebody to tell me to go back to my country, because my, Houston's con your my country. country's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they wanted to be their own country anyway, but, you know, technically I should be more judgmental and asshole -ish than them, and I'm not. So if I can do it, you can too. You went to one of the protests. Yeah, I, I was downtown yesterday walking Oops. around. I... I took one of my friends down, she wanted to, to march, and so I videotaped some of it, hung out for about half an hour, then... Half hour in the sun, you? I was wearing a hat, and my arms were covered. And then I saw a great movie called Love Witch, which is at the New Art right now. It's, Love Witch. It's really, it's awesome. Very like 70s exploitation vibe, oh, but nice. smart, smart. You know, on election night, I didn't want to watch all, I thought Trump would get up and start screaming about needing a recount and all that stuff. So I told my wife, let's just go to the movies and see two movies, you know, and, be, and we'll get home about 9.30 or so. And yeah. when I walked out of the theater, I heard some people talking that Trump was winning and it was like, oh, this is crazy. And then I looked on the internet, it was pretty like, yeah. we avoided uh -huh. the whole thing and then kaboom, man, kaboom. But yeah. what, what do we got going here? We're here to talk about art. Oh, this one's called The Heat, or Heat. It's just, just, uh, this one's not that deep, actually. It's just how I felt with just being in California and feeling like I'm in Texas with the humidity and the heat. What's up with just, this warm fucking yeah, November? I can't, huh? I can't deal with it, man. I it's like, it's like, it. excuse me, you left Texas because it's because like Because of that, yeah. That's you why know, I, six months out of the year, right? Yeah, well, you know, you'll catch me screaming in the streets about it, you know, I just, it's just another nut in the mix so it really, you know, I blend in. <laughs> well, you know what they say about California is, is uh, why is California like granola? Because if they're not fruits or nuts, they're flakes and crumbs. Nice. Okay. okay. You ever heard that one? Wow, Ooh. shit, that makes No, but you know the seven Hollywood dwarfs, right? Sleazy, scummy, dopey, wimpy, flaky, horny, and carless. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure you, well. I think I've seen all of them. It's Uber, uh, Uberless now, is that, is that it? Now here's another one with the face coming off, yes? Yeah, this one's oh. called the stairs. It's just, all of these are like, you know, I guess it gets the point across with the one word, but, uh, yeah, this was a representation of how 
I used to get, uh, before I knew I was sick again, I, was, I used to get stuck in the, in the basement and up, going up the stairs when I, when I worked at the shipping store. And I'd stay in that position, I just added the cane for drama, but I stayed in that position for five minutes, you know, just trying to get up the stairs and I just couldn't because my legs didn't want to work. I felt this horrible pain in my stomach. And then my boss or somebody else would come around and, you know, I'd find the strength to just act like I was just, hey, I'm just in the middle of this, you know, walking up the stairs, you know. I'd have to hide it for a while. Um, did you finally go to the doctor? I mean, or did the doctors not find it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I well, finally went to the doctor. It took, it took long enough, you know. Um, they found it like nine months later. It had been grown for like four years. And uh, I actually found out on my uh, second year marriage anniversary. So wow. that was awesome. You know, wow. some shit always happens around, you know, anniversaries or Christmases or, you know, it was always great news around those times, you know. Uh, but that's just how life works, I guess. Oh, but, hey, well, uh, Alex Arispe, you are a survivor. And a fucking great artist. On well, top of everything that. else. Um, yeah, now, I you. met you, I, I got to tell the story just because it's always... Um, you know, I own a gallery and a lot of people come to me, hey, I know this guy who's a great artist. People hit me up, hi, would you look at my art, all this stuff. So I had a very good friend who was a neighbor of yours, Carlos Batts, and he said, hey, you gotta look at this guy's art. You gotta look at this guy's art. And I, uh, you came by and showed me your art, yeah. and I was like, hey, man, this is pretty cool as far as like stuff that, um, relative to all the stuff I see. Yours, you had an original, completely original vision. It was very unique. It was all the, all the great things that I look, all the hallmarks oh. of uh, what I like in the art. And then um, I was gonna tell Carlos how much I liked it, and he, and he passed away suddenly, yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah. And you were a friend of Carlos. Yeah, yeah, I, I met him uh, a month before he died, but he was my neighbor for about five years. I just say hi and bye. He helped my then wife break into the, our apartment because she locked herself out. Then uh, she invited Carlos and, and his wife Lillian over for dinner and we both found out we were artists and you know he didn't get to see the, the paintings physically but you know I showed him what I had on Facebook. He was impressed. He's like well I'm gonna talk to this guy Matt. Yeah. You know and he's like uh, you know um, he's his words were like, he's either going to like it or tell you to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. Well, I didn't tell you to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah it, 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 it really sucked because um, there's not too many people I can discuss uh, art unpretentiously with. And he was, he was one of them. Yeah, he was yeah. a great guy. And I've always yeah. felt like, uh, like this was meant to be. So, uh, uh, so yeah. I, I, I was a fan of your art from the minute I saw it. And I know Carlos is looking down now going, all right, keep this career going. So yeah, we're going to keep it going, it, man. man. Thank you very much. All right, much. thanks for being Count on Modern Art, Art Blitz. Blitz. Thank you. And uh, we do this every Sunday. Live, live at, five. at five. On dronebox.com. Drone and at modernartblitz.com. Archived on YouTube. Woo! Nolan?